Welcome to Meaningful Vitality, the first episode since we decided to change our name. I'm happy to have you. I feel like I have a really good episode for you today and a really interesting way to look at trauma. Today, we're going to talk about the financial cost of trauma, how it impacts the workplace and places of business. I'm not at all saying that money is the most important thing when it comes to trauma or for mental health. But I do think this is an interesting way to look at it, and I hope that it can start changing the way companies and places of business view mental health and trauma and helping their employees in a special way. I also want to say like, this is not going to get into too much of how to deal with trauma. There will be a little bit of that, but if you want more information on trauma, check out some of my other information on my website or YouTube or where where some of my podcasts are. So I've talked about it before, so I will go over it a little bit, but trauma is any kind of life-altering event. It doesn't have to be violent or um, really strong, such as like being assaulted or things like that or an accident, but it is something that impacts one in a negative way and impacts their overall well-being. It can lead to all sorts of mental health disorders or problems such as anxiety, depression, PTSD, and as I'll talk about in this episode as well, just physical health issues as well. Um, It can also impact how one might maintain relationships, how they attach to others or have anxiety in those relationships, which when thinking about work, that's a really big thing to think about with how they interact with coworkers or others that they might interact with, such as people that they're trying to serve or customers. Um... It can also, like I said, lead to decrease in physical health, including an increased risk of chronic illness and a reduction in one's overall lifespan. One that has experienced trauma typically lives a shorter life, and they have um, a higher rate of heart attack, stroke, developing cancer, some of those big things that in our modern age really are some of the things that take people's life or you know, indicate how they pass away. Trauma currently affects up to 70, just over 70% of people worldwide. And approximately 31% of those people have been exposed to four or more traumas. So those are some pretty big numbers there. And there's a lot of crossover. And I'll talk about this throughout this episode between trauma and depression. Those that have experienced depression or have experienced trauma, I'm sorry, have higher rates typically of depression. Childhood trauma is associated with depression in adulthood. And just to throw some numbers at you again, 76% of those with depression disorder have also experienced at least one sort of trauma in their childhood. According to the World Health Organization, more than 300 million people suffer from depression And around 60% of those are not receiving treatment. So that's quite a bit of people already that have depression and a lot of people that aren't getting the help that they need. So that's going to bleed into their place of work, how they do their job, how they approach those that they're serving or that they're interacting with on a day-to-day basis at their place of business. Um, It interferes, depression and trauma can interfere with one's ability to complete a task 20% of the time, and it hinders their cognitive performance about 35% of the time. And I'll put links to all these articles and sources at the bottom um, or in the show notes of this episode. And major depressive disorder is one of the most common mental health disorders in the United States right now. And it costs the United States economy about 210, just over $210 billion each year. So that's a lot of money that we're spending in this area. PTSD specifically, so that's a post-traumatic stress disorder. So one that um, experiences a very high level of trauma typically, and it's a diagnosis that we can give, is associated with increased health care costs, including mental health treatment costs and physical medical costs due to comorbid health conditions. So it goes back to some of those other things I talked about earlier, um, that those that have higher rates of mental health issues also have higher rates of physical health issues. Trauma can impact the ability of an individual to manage finances, 
And it also can lead to how they handle their finances, leading to debt and financial strain. And the more stress they have impacts how they do their job at work as well. Or maybe they stay at a job longer than they would like to just because, you know, they have to make ends meet. Um, It can also trauma specifically if it's a more specific kind of trauma can impact how they view their life or how they avoid certain situations. For example, they may try to avoid going out in public or using public transportation, which impacts a lot in their life. They also might not engage in hobbies that they once enjoyed or take care of themselves their way in a way that they would like to, which really impacts their overall well-being and life outlook in a negative way. Um, It might also hold them back from pursuing educational or career goals. Maybe they're not going to apply for a promotion or get advanced training just because of either fears they have or just because of how depressed they may feel with certain things in their life and because of their experiences. Um, Trauma can impact the ability of a person to engage in healthy behaviors such as exercising, healthy eating, having a good community around them, which again will um, cause them to spend more money on health care because of their health and they're not taking care of their mind or their body. And a lot of that goes back to the employers just because employers pay a good portion of a majority, at least in the United States, of a majority of their health care costs and their insurance plan. So it's costing companies quite a bit of money. Um, 60% of workers who experience mental health issues say that it impacts their ability to do their job in a good way or to the best of their abilities. And that's according to the American Psychological Association. Um, it impacts their ability. You know, think about it. If if someone's depressed, if someone's having these these feelings of feeling inadequate, if they have these negative core beliefs as a result of trauma, they're not going to be able to function at the best of their abilities. They're going to have lower energy levels. They're going to not sleep as well. So that's going to even impact their energy levels any more, even more. And they're not going to be able to engage in relationships at work. They're not going to be able to do their job to the best ability. They're just not completely able to focus because their brain is not functioning to the best of its ability. And I've talked about these negative core beliefs so much when I've talked about trauma in the past, how they develop after a trauma or a negative experience. And some of them might be, I'm inadequate. I'm not good enough. Um, I should have done something different. And those kind of really stick with those people and it impacts how they do their job. If they don't feel like they're good enough as a person, they're not going to be as invested in their work. If they don't don't feel like they're a good spouse or they're a good friend, they're definitely not going to be taking their job as seriously because that's so much further down the list than some of those other things. It also impacts how they interact with their coworkers. Again, if they're not, don't feel good enough, if they feel distant, if they feel anxiety in relationships, that's going to make it hard to work with a team with those kind of people. Um, but it's also going to impact the coworkers and the supervisors. Coworkers are going to have to pick up slack. Supervisors are going to have to micromanage. And that's not something a lot of supervisors want to do. It's not something the coworkers are going to be very excited about when they have to pick up someone else's slack or do jobs that really aren't theirs just because someone may be more depressed or not be able to focus on their job as much. Um, and it's going to create some really hard and awkward dynamics that no one wants to really be a part of. The person that's depressed doesn't want that dynamic, and the supervisor and the coworkers doesn't want it either. Depression and anxiety disorders specifically, they say, cost the global economy over a trillion dollars each year. Wait for this, just in lost productivity. That's not even in healthcare costs. That's not even in, you know, going to therapy or all these comorbid conditions or how it affects their lifestyle. That's just in areas where they could have been more productive, where they could have gotten more done at work and made money for the company instead of losing the company money. And companies really need to like open their eyes and open their ears and look at this if they start taking some of these issues more seriously and encouraging mental health for employees, they're going to 
reap the returns when it comes to their balance sheet. They're going to reap the returns when it comes to sales made that year because if a depressed employee is able to get to a better place in his life, he's going to be happier. He's going to have a better relationship with his family. He's going to engage in hobbies. And as a result, he's going to come to work, you know, more full of life, you know, more gas in his tank and be able to do his job to the best of his abilities. Um, When it comes to how much days are missed of work. People that experience mental health issues, trauma and depression more specifically, miss almost twice as many days of work. And in last year in the United Kingdoms, it cost the the country 8.4 billion in just lost days of work and what could have been made up in those areas. Again, people are missing work because they're depressed because they can't get out of bed. And it's also leading to some of those physical health issues. So we've talked about some of those things as well. The lost productivity, the lost deadlines, we haven't really mentioned as much, but they're not going to be able to make deadlines as easily. So we're going to have to extend those deadlines for those that maybe have trauma or depression. And as a result, they're not going to get as much done because now if their their first project they were supposed to do is maybe going to be due next Monday and they're supposed to start project B on Tuesday. Well, now they're doing project A till next Thursday. They're not going to start project B till Friday or maybe even the next Monday. It also, like I said, increased healthcare costs for the company because they're covering a lot of these things. Also, people that have mental health issues, depression, trauma, they usually don't stay at their job as long, which, you know, creates more staff turnover, And then they have to train new people, which takes manpower. It costs money to go through some of those things and those trainings that can really affect the company in a negative way. And something we haven't talked about or kind of alluded to when it comes to just how they interact with coworkers, but it's going to impact morale and engagement in the company in a really negative way. People aren't going to buy into the culture. And that's something that's super important in the research shows that having employees that buy into the culture are going to be more successful for the company. Um, They're going to have to start increasing some of those things and trying to prioritize morale. And I think prioritizing morale also goes hand in hand with increasing mental health awareness for the company. So trauma can also lead to a decrease in creativity and innovations for the employees. So they're not going to be thinking outside the box. They're not going to be coming up with new ideas. They're going to be doing the bare minimum to get by. I mean, when you have a trauma, your brain gets stuck in that and your brain is just trying to survive. Your brain is not going to be going above and beyond to come up with these new ideas to make the company money, these new ideas to be more productive or to increase morale. That employee is going to go to work and do the bare minimum to survive. They are simply going to be there to to collect a paycheck. They don't care if the company succeeds or not. They're just trying to survive. So we need to start reining that in and realizing that because that's not going to be enjoyable and it's not going to be as good for the companies. Um, Some industries, some jobs are more likely to have mental health issues and more specifically trauma. First responders such as EMS, police officers, certain doctors and things like that in the emergency room, they are more likely to experience trauma on the job. And if that takes place at work. I really do believe it is the employee's response or the I'm sorry, the employer's responsibility to get them the help they need to work through that trauma. And the research shows that police departments or hospitals or things like that that do that, they have more successful police departments. Their officers are staying longer. Their officers are doing a better job in some of those areas. Um So continuing to think about some of those things, I also know another number to throw at you is individuals with mental health problems, depression and things like that, on average, spend about fifteen hundred dollars more a year out of pocket on medical expenses. So this not only affects the employers, now employees are spending more money. So they're spending more money to take care of themselves, either to go to therapy appointments or physical health issues that can be linked to mental health issues. 
So I also have talked a little bit about how it affects our quality of life, but in employees that are not living the best life, they're also more likely to go to different substances to cope. They're more likely to drink, to smoke, to abuse drugs because they're just trying to numb that pain. They're just trying to cope and check out when they get home from work. And then they're more likely to probably not sleep as well. So they're going to cope with other things in the morning. They're going to cope with caffeine to wake up. So they're not even like completely focused on their job because they're so sleep deprived because all these substances, you know, they have substances that numb the pain then they have substances to come to work and to function the next day. But the research shows too, taking caffeine when you're sleep deprived, you're still not functioning at the best of your ability. So I think think we need to kind of start reframing these things with the workplace. Appropriate support and treatment are essential for individuals who have experienced trauma or managed long-term trauma impacts in their life. Um, Mental health stigma, though, gets in the way from some people getting help. As I said earlier, 60% of people with depression are not getting the treatment they need. And some of that may be stigma. So if companies even if they're not willing to cover certain things, can just encourage it or normalize it. Because I know certain fields make it really difficult for employees to go to seek treatment. Police officers, certain doctors um, still have that stigma of if you're going to get help, you shouldn't be a doctor because a doctor should be able to handle it on their own. And I've seen that and I've heard that in my own experiences in the counseling setting that Some don't want others to know they're there. Obviously, everything's already confidential, but they're still a little anxious about people finding out that they're there. And if we can tear that stigma down and normalize mental health treatment, things will be better in the workplace as a result. Um, So we've talked about like how it can affect it in a negative way, but employees that have addressed their trauma and have worked through some of those things, they're going to have a higher sense of well-being. They're going to have increased productivity And it's going to cost the company less because they're more productive, they're happier, they're more creative, and they're also going to the doctor's office a lot less. They're also using their insurance a lot less, and they're missing days of work a lot less because of things in that nature as well. Also, it can cause a liability for the company. Employees with lower mental health rates and lower um, rates of depression or like people that suffer from some of those things they're more likely to act out at work in a negative way. They're more likely to get into a fight or to even file a lawsuit against the company. And that can be a real liability that, again, can cost money to the company. So workplace policies that increase mental health awareness, increase those that want to go to seek treatment for either trauma or depression will help the company. It will help the employees feel more comfortable seeking treatment And as a result, they will be better employees. So I think it will be worth it if companies start maybe paying for more things and being more flexible with certain hours to increase overall well-being for the company. I've talked about it before, but I do believe EMDR therapy is a very effective way to treat trauma specifically or these negative core beliefs. Really, it's helpful to treat just about any mental health issue or disorder, but this one specifically, I'm talking about trauma and depression. And it has been shown to be a very quick result kind of therapy. It's a very short, it can be a very short term, not always. And it still might take a while, but in terms of therapy, you know, you can get results. I see change in as short as one or two sessions. Obviously I'm not closing those clients out in one or two sessions, but it is just you know, eye opening. And it's just surprises me so much how quick I can get results when doing EMDR therapy with clients. Another option as far as EMDR therapy is doing what are called EMDR intensives. And that's, you know, a really large amount of therapy done in a short amount of time. For example, I will do sessions that are two to four hours sometimes at a time. And sometimes I will meet with clients three or four times a week doing that. However, they get results very quickly and everyone's going to respond differently. But I have literally worked with individuals within a week and I've taken them further than I feel like I could have taken them in a year of weekly treatment. Just because you don't have to work with time restraints as much, you can just keep going for two to four hours. Typically three or four are pretty good. 
and not have to worry about running out of time. So if companies want to do something, EMDR and EMDR intensives are the best bang for you, for their buck. So just in conclusions, trauma, mental health disorders do impact companies in a negative way. And as a result, employees are not as productive. They have increased health issues. They don't get along with the team as well. And it's going to cost the company in big ways, either with medical expenses, not being as productive that year, and just missed days of work. So I think it'd be very advantageous for both those individuals that have experienced trauma and the companies to start encouraging these things, tearing down those walls of stigma, and helping those grow so that they can continue to live a healthy and meaningful life.